Today we're going to be working on blocks and hatching, and this is our ICA drawing that you'll find in your folder. And just go through the instructions that are listed above it. A lot of these instructions say to create a new file name or to save it under a certain file name. You just ignore that. Uh, we're just going to work in this drawing and save it in this drawing. Um, one of these has architectural dimensions, and I give you the uh, equivalent decimal d dimensions instead. Uh, so use that. So just uh, um, don't blindly follow <laughs> word by word what these exercises say to do. Right, we're going to use these uh, these boxes here to draw everything, and then we're going to save it in this drawing uh, when we're done. So this is my file. Um, you open it up, and I'll save it. Just remember to save every now and then as you go through. Um, forgot to erase that. I'll get rid of this one before we move on. The uh, starting off as blocks. Blocks is a way to you draw uh, anything, pretty much uh, anything you want to draw, and you can create it as an element so that you can kind of copy and paste really easily, and we call those blocks. And so our first one is super easy. We're just going to draw a circle with a couple lines through it, um, and we're going to call that a block. Uh, then for it, if we look at it, if we zoom in here, using my middle scroll wheel, we can see what our instructions are, which is start a drawing from scratch and use a template. All right, we ignore that part. We're going to draw a circle full diameter of one, and we're going to add in these cross, uh, these center lines through it. And so I'm just going to go up here to my circle, do center diameter, and my diameter is supposed to be one. Oops. Yep. And so there it is. I can check it. Um, through here, here's my properties box. I can check it if I highlight this. Come on. There we go. And my diameter is one. So, and I can change it from there if I wanted to. Put that back over on the other side, out of the way. So that's my my diameter one. And now I can draw lines through it. And let's say I want to draw through the center. If I hold down the shift key, it makes me draw an ortho mode. And so I can draw straight, or I can turn ortho on. I could turn it on ortho mode over here. I guess I can, can do that now using the menu bar. And I'm just going to extend that out. Um, and then we need another line. Use my line command again. There we go. And both of these are supposed to be center lines, so I can highlight them both. I can come up here and I can change my line type here without changing. They're on the same layer, but I can change uh, the line type they're on. That actually, it's two different lines. I don't want that. Just going to extend that one. That looks good. Yeah, that's good enough. There's center lines. Um, maybe I want to trim that back a little bit. Those look kind of long. There we go. And just grabbing my grips. Before I forget about it, I want to turn off ortho mode. I don't normally operate in ortho mode. Uh, you could do a little better job lining those up, but you get the point. And now to make a block, we just type in the command block. And... Yep. And it's going to ask me what's my name. And I think the instructions said to call it a circle. And I've practiced a little bit in here already, so I may have already have one named that, but we'll see. Where's my base point? Where do I want to insert it at? Where's my, my grip? Where's Where do I line it up from? And I'm going to pick the center for that. And what objects are part of my block? So if I want to combine things into a group, I have to tell it what things go into. And I'm going to select all those things. Hit space bar, that selects them all. I'm going to convert it to a block. I'm going to allow it to explode, which means if once you insert it, you can exploding it puts it back into its original element pieces. So if you want to, if you don't, if you you could explode it and then you could delete the center lines if you wanted to or the circle uh, through that. Down here, you can set what the units are, and quite often I set mine to be unitless and it will insert it some. Uh, base unit so it's easier to move it back and forth uh, from different files different sizes in there and I'll click OK all right and so nothing looks like it happened but if I click it now all of this is one unit and if I were to grab it by the base point all right the whole thing moves so it's a block it's all gonna work together if I exploded it it would all go back to uh, 
through individual elements, a circle and two lines, uh, through that. And now we're gonna, we can drop it in. And by doing, you can insert blocks by coming up here, I do insert command, drop over here, and I can do, um, I guess, recent blocks. And it, I this little dialog, this is new in, in AutoCAD 2023, the old versions didn't have a box like this. Uh, we had a little dialog box that had all this stuff in it. And what do I want to insert? So here's a bunch of things, and I'm going to uh, do this one. I think that was the last one I had. And here I can insert it. Um, if I had to click that once down here, I can set different things. But if I want to make it larger or smaller, I could set that down here. And I can change the rotation, I could repeat, or I could explode it automatically or rotate it uh, based on the angle. So I'm just going to drop it in. So um, you can do that. Say any place you want, you can drop that block and it always looks the same. And that just makes a lot faster if you're editing things and you've got standard uh, standard drawing pieces or parts. And, uh, you can drop those in as blocks and you see it makes uh, everything go a lot faster. So according to these next instructions, let me get rid of this insert folder. According to these next instructions, right, we're going to ignore the part about opening EX241. Right, we just did that over here. We already have a block named circle. I dropped it in twice. Now we're going to draw a square, or 1.1, 1 .1, uh, through that, and we're going to name it as a block plate. And so I'm going to go back to my home menu. Here's my rectangular drawing. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do dimensions D1, comma 1. And there's my 1, comma 1. Click to insert it. That's through there. And I, they're called that plate. And so I can do block. And I'm going to call this plate. And I'm going to pick a point for my base point. That's great. What are my objects? I like that. Those are my objects, and I am going to do all that and just say OK. So now I should have a block named plate. Now I'm going to insert plate. I'm going to insert. It's a recent block. It comes up here. I'm going to insert plate. Do I want to do it as a uniform scale? Nope. I want to do it as a scale. And I'm going to scale. It was 1 to 1, and so now in my x dimension, I want it to be 6 by 4. Go and click it, and it's dropped in now. And I'll get rid of this. Always annoys me. So this this should be six by four. I can check it here. Here's my measurement tool and measure John. We used that a couple weeks ago in lab. And yep, that's six, and that's four. So it worked. So now I've I it started as this. This was the block, but you can stretch it and you can scale it. And when you drop it in, and that so I've made a bigger block now. And now I can insert uh, circles. So if I just come back to insert uh, recent blocks, circle was the other recent one. And now it's still trying to do six by four. <laughs> I don't want that. So we need escape. I want here. I want to scale it, do a uniform scale of one. And now you know, that would be the one. You should <laughs> dimension this and put them in properly. But I'm just showing you an example here. Now we're going to do it as a 1.5. And that way we can get it a larger circle. In. And so we just scaled it up. So that's just practicing inserting. We have two different blocks now, two of them inside the other one. And we can insert them different scales uh, and stretch them if we need to. And this one over here, we're going to draw a chair. And then we're going to insert it. And I would suggest we did a couple weeks ago, we did inserting as an array. That looks like an array, doesn't it? That'd be a good thing to practice <laughs> on that. Uh, in this little box here, we're supposed to draw the chair. And what was the size of the chair? The chair is a two by two chair with four inch side arms and a five inch back on it. And I come back here to home. I'm going to use the rectangle tool again. And I want two by two. I'm going to dimensions two, two, and click it in. And there it is. And now I need to draw the sides on it. I'm going to overwrite the edge here. I'm going to draw a line on top of it. And you won't see that line, but it's in there. I'm going to overwrite 
this one too. The, the rectangular tool is easiest to, to quickly get that dimension in. I'm going to offset those, and I think I say here, yep, um, we're going to use 0.3. So I'm going to do offset command, and I'm going to set that to 0.3, and I'm going to offset that line I just drew in here. And I'll set that one. There's my arms, and now I'm going to offset the back by 0.5. Type in 0.5, click on the back, and there we go. Now there's uh, little lines on hidden kind of in there. I want to get rid of those just to clean things up. You don't see them, but they're written over the top. Now, if I were to click this, this is the whole outside edge or the envelope, and that's fine. And now I need to trim these up. So there's you, you can practice using your trim commands. How's that? There we go. Is that what it's supposed to look like? Well, they left their line across there. Well, mine's going to be different. Here's my chair. Right, through that. And now I'm going to make this into a block. And so, all right, ignore all that stuff. But we're going to make this block. I'm going to call it chair. And so I'm going to make a block out of that. I'm going to name it chair. And I'm going to specify a base point. And you can pick any place you want to do it, but let's pick someplace convenient. Is it convenient to be in the middle? Is it convenient to be here? I'm going to say one of these corners is probably a convenient place to insert things because then we could line those up and we can snap those to um, an edge of something. If we were just out here in the middle of space, you know, you're not going to ever probably snap that to like a side of a wall or something. So we'll leave that. What's in it? Everything in here. I highlight that. Space bar to uh, finish that. And everything looks great. And I click OK. And we I made one before because I was practicing. So I'm going to say redefine that block. <laughs> so now I've got one over here, chair. It did just pop up over here. All right, from that. Now I need to draw this whole uh, auditorium. And it's a great big box. It's 55 by 55. So I'm going to use my favorite box tool up here. And let's just draw that. And I mentioned 55 by 55. There it is. Isn't that cool? And there's a stage here that's 12 feet off the top. Draw a line. Gonna draw a line across the top, snapping to those edges. I'm going to offset that 12 feet. Go down here. There's my 12. Okay. So there's my box. There's a secret line still there. I'll get rid of it. Now the, the question is, I need to draw these rows in here. And if I were to, my base point is at this this bottom right corner. Well, let's let's measure everything off that bottom right corner. And so I need to be six feet off the back wall and five feet off the side wall to start. Let me draw, I'll probably start in this corner, right? And so let's draw this in. Do, do, and that looks good. I'm gonna offset six feet off the back walls. You look kind of construction lines. And offset again, I'm going to do five feet off the sidewall. And that's just to line me up. So right there is where I went the corner of my first chair. And that's great. So I can do an insert now. Um, I'm going to insert a block. And I'm going to insert a chair. And you can see my insert point is that bottom right corner. So I'm snapping there. And it's in place now. And I don't need these lines anymore. I can get rid of those. There's my first chair. And now, uh, how do we do that? Well, it looks a lot to me like a lot like an array. So if I come back over here, here's my array tool. All right. And what am I going to array? I'm going to array that. And it wants to go that direction. And I would like it to go the other direction. So let's go that way. Let's grab this arrow and it drug it over there. Um, the question now is how many rows and columns do I have? And if you count these chairs across, you should get 10. And then I've got one, two, three, four, five, six rows. 10 by six rows. And they are four feet in between chairs. And the chairs are right next to each other. And the chair is two by two. So 10 by six. So I want 10 columns by six rows. And you can say, well, that looks pretty dense. That's not the same spacing. What do I want between them? I want, um, if I put negative two between the columns, that's, there's 
a unit every two feet. And the units are two feet wide, and hence they look like they're right next to each other, so that's great. And it's a good negative because we're going back to the left. It wasn't because it's the right direction, but okay. And then these are four feet in between. And if I typed in four and then zoom out, you know, double check your drawing, right? That's not high enough. That's not far enough up. So it should be, it's that uh, four isn't just a space between it. That's a space, space between marker points. And so here's one marker point and here's the next. It's actually two feet plus four feet. So it should be six. And that looks right. So there. And escape. There's my array right, from that. Now that I've got this array, I can just do a copy. <laughs> I, can, I can click this array and um, let's do the whole thing. Um, we can do a copy. Where's my base point? There's my base point. I come over here and I would have, or I should measure it to get the set right. Um, assuming that you find your your starting point correctly, right? Then you're done. Right? You draw on the whole auditorium right, from that. Uh, moving along, right? Another block one uh, over here. Uh, now we're going to open Design Center, and Design Center is a cool feature that keeps track of all these uh, all these blocks, and you can find the Design feature under View. So you go to the View menu bar. And then I come over here. Um, this is the icon for Design Center. And I'll click that, and it pops this up. And I've been, I had it open earlier. Design Center will show you every, all the main elements, including blocks, that are in each of your drawings. And again, uh, commonly in, kind of in production mode in a consulting firm, we had one drawing that had all of our standard uh, elements in it, all of our standard blocks, and we would... Every time I wanted to add something, it's in that standard one. Now, what we've got here is we've got samples uh, that came with AutoCAD, and they've got different files for each kind of sample that you've got. <coughs> Excuse me. Through there. So here's design view, and we're going to navigate down to the tree view. This is the tree, our navigation tree. We're going to go to AutoCAD 2020. It's actually 2023 now. Sample ENUS Design Center folder, and I'll tell you where that is. That is in, if you go to your C drive, go to Program Files, go to Autodesk, and we're going to go to AutoCAD 2023. That's where we're at. And we're going to go to ENUS, US English System, and, oh, I need to go Sample, and then ENUS. Sample, ENUS, Design Center. And here are a bunch of standard drawings that have blocks in them about different things. So if I wanted to draw kitchens, I would go to the kitchen one uh, and so forth. Electronics, all that stuff is in there. And it tells us here that we need to go to uh, Fasteners US and insert something. So if I go to Fasteners US and click on blocks, it shows me over here all the blocks in there. I could also look at all the different layers. There's only one. All the line types, because you can make your own line types in AutoCAD. Maybe that's what you want to find. You can also change your textiles and all that. Well, we're just going to deal with blocks. And most of the time, that's all I ever, uh, it's all I ever use Design Center for is looking at different blocks. And as I just pick one, uh, pick anything, let's do slotted pan head. And we're going to insert it. And I'm going to do my insertion point on screen. I could change the scale of it. I can make it bigger. I could do it in uniform scale. Um, I can make it twice as big. Uh, sure. And then we'll come through here and zoom in. All right. There's my little, my little pan head screw. And so that's what Design Center is really good for, is uh, finding out all these standard drawings uh, let you pick things easily. So here's electronics, right? So instead of drawing these each time, I can... I've got these set up as the blocks. We can use these blocks. We just drop them in. And you can obviously see how much faster that makes things. Here's things for home space planning. And what kind of blocks do they have? Well, there's your hutch. There's your lamp and the plant and all that stuff uh, through there. And then, so they're just going to uh, walk you through this to, to use some of the features within Design Center to add your, your uh, portions in here. 
Over here, you'll draw your table, make it into a block, and then you're going to move those around um, this table. And so you'll have to rotate them. So this is the back of the chair, so you want to rotate it so that's always away from it. And then do your spacing around the table from that. The other thing we can do with blocks is we can make them smart blocks. We can add in details about it, and then when we insert the block, or if we want to change uh, text within the block, it makes it easier for us. Here's a standard title block. It's pretty common in a civil engineering world. And you can see that we've, in a standard title block, we have who's it's designed by. This is initials of people, and who checked it. Here's scales, the name of the project, all that stuff. All right, from that, and you can kind of see when I'm hovering over this, everything is highlighting, right? So these are not individual items. These aren't uh, individual boxes and text, and all these elements are not by themselves. These have all been created in a block. And again, because we use this title block, and we just drop it into different, uh, into our layout views, typically, but in this case, I've got it in, obviously, in the model space for our exercise today. And so you can just drop this in, and the nice thing is, let's say we double-click it, and now it's, you know, I set up fields in here. We've got fields set up, and we can come through here and change these. And so if I change the name of the project, right, I click on that. Here's the value that's currently being displayed. Here's what the tag is called. I can change the name of the project. And I could, um, I can change it like that, Valpo Road. So I've now changed the name of the project. And you can see down here now, it changed that. And so I could quickly change uh, all these items on here and so those that's an information piece within within the block itself and again if you just double click the block you get the this edit box pops up and you're going to click through here and you're going to change these values to match what we have up here all right what's my road name i don't know if i change that in here road name is line pra so i should just type line oops pr P-R-A, there we go, click there, and now that changes right here, right from that. I can't edit that individually unless I were to explode this block, and so this is the quick way, it's actually much easier to edit the, uh, using these information tabs. That's what we do then, All right from that. I've also got title block um, as a block, and so I can insert that, and so I'm going to do back insert, and what am I going to insert? Um, recent blocks. And I can flip through here and find title block. Or I could do insert um, blocks from libraries and tell it what library to look into. Or block or favorite blocks or recent blocks. Right from there. And I could set up what my favorites are. I don't have any set right now. Here's recent. Here's blocks that are in the current drawing. And so that's also a fair game. Um, because we've got that in there. So I here's title block. I'm going to hold it up. And there it is. And it wants to come in at 1.5 because that's what I had my last one at. So let's change that back to 1. Uniform scale, yep. And now when I bring it in, there it is. Now I'll just set that there. And it's going to um, want to know if I want to scale or rotate it anymore. But here's 1 is my default. So I'll just accept that. Once I've accepted it, once to drop it in, now it's going to ask me all these things about it because I've inserted it from there. And so my road name, right, wasn't that uh, PRA. And if I come over here, yeah, I can change it there. So this one was just getting uh, used to. Once you make a block that has attributes like that, you can drop this in. And then when you do drop it in, it's going to ask you, prompt you, um, for what those fields should be. So it's kind of leaving a blank uh, question and it wants to fill in the blanks as you do that. Next one is we're gonna draw a little gate valve. This is for, I guess, more mechanical engineering, but doing water resources things on that. I'm gonna draw a really bad one <laughs> just because I can't. Um, uh, I guess I'll turn over tomorrow. It won't be too bad, All right? Um, so we're gonna do And come up here, and there it is. there's my gate valve. <laughs> Not very good. Do a nicer job than that. All right, so there's my gate valve. And now, so that's one element in there. And if you read the instructions now, we 
we want to come to and do an attribute definition uh, piece in it. We're going to do type, no prompt, gate is the value, and constant is the mode. And so we have to remember that because you can't zoom back up there while this command is active. Um, maybe I should have just set it next to it, but yeah, I can't zoom in now. And so um, the first one is type. There is no prompt. Default is gate. All right, uh, through here, here's the, the types they are. And it's constant, all that stuff. Okay, and we can drop it in here. There's a there's a spot where you can set the text size, and I think it may be really large uh, when you guys do your first ones. So just that's down here. So if you set your text height, that might be 5.0 when you start. Set it to 1. And I use Roman S because it looks nicer than Roman T. So, And then you're going to make a different, you're going to make these other four tags. And each one of them has a different uh, type of mode um, for that. Some of them are, are invisible. Some of them are invisible and verify and all that. So you're going to set these tags all like that. I did one. And now if I do a, so these are different elements. Yep. If I do a block command now, and now I'm going to say gate valve. That's my new one. Specify base point. I'll put it right in the middle. Specify objects. Now when I select the objects, if I select those, those attributes, now they're in there and they've been brought in. And now if I do an insert uh, command, insert, let's go recent blocks. Here's my recent blocks. Zoom up to the top and drop it in because, um, because I had an attribute with it. All right, the attribute came with it and we've got, and it was part of, this is part of the block. When I insert the block, it shows up again over here and if i were to double click this now um which one do i want to edit i want to edit that right. Oops, that's sorry that's block editor i don't want to, i don't want to do block editor okay yep and so um yep. we can hit that And we want to do attribute, display all attributes. Oh. Attribute editor. Click on that. So attribute display, make sure it's on so I can display the attributes. There we go. Um, once you drop these in, right, do that. Um, ooh, that was a constant mode. And here's invisible and verify. If I insert another attribute, so that's att um, def um, tag was what? Manufacturer, and it's invisible and verify, and default is none, click OK, and add one more in here, and now I'm going to redefine my block and my block's name should have been gate valve. And I'm going to pick the start point. There we go. Select the objects. Okay. Redefine it. I do need to explode. 
this first. Because it is already it's already a block, and so it didn't you can't put blocks inside blocks. <laughs> Who would have guessed? At least not with the same name. Pick all that. It's good practice. Uh, through there, we've got all that. And now I click OK. Redefine the block. Now it worked. All right. And because the last one was verify, now every time I drop it in, it's going to ask me um, to, to verify that. Through there. And if I were to insert, insert it now, going to ask me to verify that. Now, the things that are constant, it doesn't ask you about. So that's what I was missing before. I don't know. Well, you should probably see that. So it will ask you for that. This was a constant. I named it gate. So it's just going to drop that in there from that. So your, your should look like this when you're done, right? The gate is a constant, so it's never going to change. And these other ones do change. And when you, when you insert a block that has those kinds of fields, it'll ask you for it. All right, now moving on to something completely different is hatching, and hatching is kind of cool, so hatch is the command, we'll open it up, and hatching is just what it looks like, right? It's going to do cross-hatching inside of it. I'm in the, the newer versions of AutoCAD are really nice uh, in that they, they do a good job of auto-defining where they think you want to hatch, and you just kind of hover your mouse inside of an area, and it'll fill it. It calls it flooding. Uh, there and then I'll fill it. If you want to change your style of the of the hatch up here, you can pick these different ones. Like now, if I were to do that, I get those weird looking things. I could do a solid hatch and it looks like that. Uh, this is uh, a standard crossed hatch version. And if I hit this little down arrow button here, I can see all of the different hatches there are. And there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot in here. There's concrete. There's um, Hounds two stuff and triangles, right? If we did triangles, it would look like that. Isn't that cool? All right, from there. Ooh. <laughs> so we're just gonna do the the hatch and now get get us on that. The other thing we can do on hatch is I don't want that. I wanna go back up here and we want the ANSI, let's do 32. Um, actually. 31 is a single line, so let's use that. What's that look like? Well, it looks like that, but if you look at these pictures, it's supposed to be a little bit bigger than there, so hover there. Well, I can change that scaling factor, and I can change it here. And so I can make this 2.0. Oops, and so I can do that. I can also put it in here, and if I don't like that, I can change my angle. And if I change the angle, I can make that 90. Oops. Hey, oh, I made it all one hatch. All right, let's start over. You have to do hatch, and then you've got to jump out of it. And that's not good. We want this to go back to zero. Got it. And we want to do close hatch. And then we're going to do hatch again. And now we're going to come over here. And now we went to 90 degrees. You have to, you have to do the close hatch first. Otherwise, it thinks you're still in the same place. So I've got, and now I've got my two opposite hatches. And that's by changing that angle. And if you ever want to change it again, just come back in, double click. You can change the angle to be 45 uh, degrees. <laughs> From where the standard is, you can also change how close they are together. Right. So you can come back in. If it doesn't look right when you print it or something, you can come back and, and fix that right. through there. The, there's, like I said, there's other different shapes and different sizes, uh, different types of hatching. Here you can just hatch that in. Uh, here's making it look like concrete. And so you use the concrete one. Um, you could put the pattern scale of 1 12th, which would be a 0.0833 in decimal, All right? And so you just, that's just practicing picking different hatches in here. Here you're hatching this to make it look like that, so you're getting some practice using the boundaries on it. Um, yeah, and again, that's just a hatching tool uh, running through there. 
over here is a road. And right, we can um, make different hatches in this. Let's do hatch. You can find the boundary. It did in one second. I can go. I found that one. Found that one. And down I found it. And I can say, I can close that. Well, I should have closed each one separately. But those are my three, my three asphalt layers. I just want to make sure it could actually find them. And then finally, you'll do that down here. This is what it should look like. When you're done, this is a house. You're going to fill in these walls in the solid and put herringbone out here on the deck. And it should look very similar to that when you're done. You can just do some practice on your hatching. And that'll take it take us through the lab today. So it looks like it's just blocks and then hatching through there. Um, and then you'll have a homework assignment where you get to practice doing uh, more blocks and uh, moving things around and lining things up. And that's what we used it for quite often is actually for space management. It's easy to drop things in. If you looked in the, those sample folders, there's you can hold things on kitchen and other furniture. And as an architect, we could go in and put that in into our drawings and see what it looks like as you go through. And that will do it for today.